Kia ora and welcome to this special World Soils Day Link online webinar. I'm Christine Harper, the Strategic Stakeholder Relationship Manager at Manaki Whenua Landcare Research. As well as recognising the importance of soils all around the world today, we are celebrating the 10th birthday of New Zealand's SMAP online system and introducing a new version of the New Zealand Soils Portal, which provides a rich resource of soils knowledge, technical knowledge and not so technical. Like much of our work at Manaki Whenua, this is a joint effort between the soil scientists and informatics expertise working together to deliver data and information in ways that you can use it and consume it. Sam Carrick will lead us off with soils information and David Medici Scott will talk about SMAP online before Thomas Kaspari takes over with a tour of the soils portal. We'll reference several websites in this presentation and rest assured all the links will be at the end of the presentation in the final slide and provided in the follow-up email so you don't need to grab them as, as you go. I'll be back at the end of the presentation to help with questions. We really love hearing your thoughts and questions, so please put them in the chat box as early as you can. On this occasion, we're really also interested in hearing from people who have ideas about what might be included in the soils portal. So while our contact details will be in the follow-up email, if you want to throw an idea into the chat box as well, that would be great. Any information and ideas to be contributed will be very welcome. So with that, over to Sam. Thanks, Christine. Um, yes, so well, welcome to today. We're celebrating, well, it was actually yesterday, but um, the United Nations World Souls Day. Uh, so yeah, today, just a quick run through on um, the type of questions we're gonna, that hopefully um, will help you. I'll, I'll kick off with just a very quick int introduction about why, why we need source um, information services. And then I'll hand over to David, who will go through some of the different ways by which we publish and make soil information available online. Thomas will give us a, um, a good, good um, run through of the new soils portal, the refresh site that's just been launched um, today. And then I'll come back in at the end and talk about some of our future plans. Do you want to move? Next slide, David. Cool, thank you. Yeah, so why do we need soil information services? If you look on the left-hand side of this slide there, you'll see um, soil is, is really at the heart of many ecosystem services, which um, our, our society relies on and a number of the issues that we're facing at, at this moment. And each one of those different issues have a range of different users. So we've got a lot of different issues and a lot of different users and, and people wanting to access soils information. But so, soils are complex. If you look just at the top right there, that's just four random soils um, selected from the Northland region. And that, that's one of many, many soils across New Zealand. We've mapped over five and a half thousand of them so far and the 35% of New Zealand, 37% of New Zealand we've covered in, in SMAP. And so they're complex. They're complex in space and they're complex in time and they're complex um, in terms of different types of processes. And it takes us a long time to build up knowledge. If you look down the bottom there, there those are the early soil surveyors in the 1930s in Northland, Northland, trying to identify those soils you see above there. And so it's really important that we maintain that knowledge. Um, a lot of the information they collect is still relevant to today. So we've got to try and pull all of that together and make it spatially relevant to different people facing different issues. So um, I'll hand over to David now to talk about um, SMAP. Thank you, Sam. So yeah, I'd like to um, celebrate the uh, 10th birthday of SMAP online. Um, so SMAP is New Zealand's uh, soil survey information system. Uh, work commenced on uh, SMAP online in the early 2000s, but it wasn't until 2010 that we started a conversation about the fact that we actually needed to provide this information publicly. Um, we had been providing a tool to allow uh, people to get access to fact sheets, but we felt that with the um, demise of paper maps, we really needed to provide a way of, of getting uh, SMAP online and SMAP maps online so that uh, people could access them. So we came up with a set of higher level requirements back in 2010 and 2011, uh, which was around that we needed an interactive map based point and click web application that we needed to provide users with the way of going to a location and getting properties of the soil at that location based on SMAP data. And that we needed to provide a way of viewing fact sheets showing soil information. 
The site itself was launched on the 30th of August in 2011, and in the intervening time, we've made significant enhancements as well as adding additional SMAP data to the point, as Sam just made, where we have 36% of the country covered. Uh, so this is the SMAP homepage, if you've ever been here, I hope, hope you have. Um, two points I just want to make now is that as well as the um, services of being able to explore map, browse, fact sheets and sibling finder, we also provide comprehensive data provenance information and a glossary. Uh, the main application is the mapping application. This is a screenshot uh, of that application. Uh, there are four map layers derived from SMAP Online, for example, soil moisture and drainage, and you can see those over on the left-hand side. And there are also three soil chemistry layers. Uh, these have national coverage, uh, a 1K by 1K grid. Uh, their estimates uh, derive using digital soil mapping techniques. The site itself has a number of functions. Uh, you can search uh, for a location or address. Uh, you can zoom and pan the map. Uh, you can query the map for soil information create reports and also create high quality maps for printing. There are a number of types of ways of querying. Uh, the region-based queries is, uh, complements the point-based query. You can draw a polygon on a map or you can use predefined features such as land, uh, Linz land parcels or Maori land blocks to define an area for soil information. And uh, you can create, a, see a summary report on the right hand side. Oh, sorry, excuse me, right hand side. Uh, and you can also um, download uh, the full fact sheets. So, as I said, those are the home page and that's the mapping application. There are a couple of other applications. So, there is um, the sibling finder. Um, sorry, no, there's the uh, browse search for sibling fact sheets. Uh, you can use a sibling name or saw name such as Glay, and you can constrain this fact sheet set listed to regional council areas. There is also a sibling finder, and here you can use observations of soil in the field, such as texture or top soil stoniness, to identify siblings with those characteristics. Again, you can then view and download sibling fact sheets. We provide a number of different types of fact sheets, uh, what we call classic improved Maori and also soil map unit fact sheets. The Maori fact sheets are new this year and are targeted obviously at Maori users and provide an assessment of suitability of soil for growing Coomera based on soil characteristics, climate and expert knowledge. Now we don't over, oh, oh sorry. Uh, so um, a bit of a summary around SMAP online usage. Um, I mean, if you just take a, a scan down the left hand side of the screen, you can see that we have a significant number of registered users and we get a lot of visitors per year. And uh, in the last financial year, we had uh, 50,000 soil reports created. And over the last 10 years, we've had 419,000 sessions and 8 million maps viewed and users have downloaded over 300,000 fact sheets. Uh, on the right hand side, I provided a little bit of feedback from a survey that was conducted in 2019. I guess the key one is that the benefits to the user and to organizations of using SMAP online, it's allowing you to do a more complete analysis and it makes project work much easier. So I mentioned that there are a couple of other um, saw, useful SOAR resources. Uh, one of these is uh, the ELRIS portal. This is what we call a clip and ship service. You can define an, uh, an area of the country and find out what layers of data are available, source data are available, and then you can uh, download that data and associated metadata. And currently we have 123 different soil layers available there. Uh, in total, there is, um, sorry, I correct myself, there's 123 soil layers and there's 228 layers available in total. Uh, we also use this as a way of delivering SMAP um, customized SMAP products to businesses and regional councils. Then there's the soil map viewer. Uh, this allows you to view soil maps uh, with national coverage. Uh, here there are two types of um, uh, data sets being what used. Uh, one is source, uh, source classified according to the New Zealand soil map classification or rather New Zealand soil classification, but there's also uh, the 16 fundamental soil layers or FSL layers such as uh, soil physical properties. Uh, this, uh, uh, the FSL is a legacy product being replaced by uh, SMAP. 
Uh, we also provide soils information for other regions. Uh, this is the Pacific Soils Portal, where we've been collating soil information for the Southwest Pacific for five countries. Uh, this is data that was collected between the 1970s and the 1990s. As you can see, it's very similar to SMAP Online. So once you've used SMAP Online, you'll be familiar with some of the other portals we provide. And then finally, uh, we have uh, our environment. Uh, uh, this is the land atlas of New Zealand, as we call it. It is, uh, has 21 layers, including uh, layers such as land use capability, wetlands, vegetation and ecosystem services. Functionally, it's very similar to SMAP. Um, and it's also celebrating its 10th anniversary tomorrow. So that, that's a quick uh, roundup of some of the soil information uh, portals and data services we provide. Uh, but all this data needs to be done in the context of soils, uh, soils knowledge, and that's where the soils portal comes in. And for that, I'll hand over to Thomas. Thank you, David. Kia ora tātou. If we were all in a room together today, I would ask you for a show of hands um, on who has actually heard about the Soils Portal and used it. And I trust quite a few of you actually have. Uh, but thank you everyone for tuning in today to learn what's new in our refreshed Soils Portal. Next slide, please. So let me just give you a quick uh, Soils Portal 101. It's a web-based platform that provides our staff, but also external users with a single access point to New Zealand soils information. And it actually does cater for a wide range of user groups, which also includes soil newbies. So don't be afraid if, if you've never heard about it and you wanna give it a go, we have a um, soils introduction uh, section there as well. Basically the whole platform is a mix of explanatory soils information, but also digital resources that you may want to use and then the pathways to those products that David has just been featuring for you. Um, last financial year, we have actually had 40,000 people visiting the source portal. So that's more than SMAP online. And we've had some 130K page views as part of that. We've actually been operational 15 years. So we are celebrating a 15 year birthday for the source portal. I uh, started in 2006, had a major reworking five years ago and we are now online since today with our third version. And so the recent upgrade was done by our Soils and Landscapes team in collaboration with the Informatics team, which had a huge input, and also a digital marketing agency, Mint Design in Christchurch. Next slide, please. So I want to talk a bit about what's new on the new Soils portal. Um, we've actually remodeled the whole content into what we hope is a simpler structure with three main items. So you can see there in the, in the red frame, uh, topics, tools, and resources. Uh, topics, it's basically our home for explanatory soils information. And you can see here the range of topics we are addressing. That's from the understanding soil section on the left side there. to uh, We have soil classification, soil survey information. And it's also the home of or where we talk about our own soils work that we do. That's in the bottom right corner there, soils at Manaki Fenua, where we feature our projects, our people, our publications, and so on. Um, tools, that's a space that's dedicated to the various soil information platforms that we as Manaki Fenua and our partners are running. And there are quite a few, as you've already seen today, and it can be quite challenging to find the right piece of soil information for your job that you're after. And believe me, there are a lot of acronyms in that space, and it takes a while to familiarize yourself with all of that. And um, so currently on the soils portal, we are having 10 tools, and that's from SMAP online to those covering Pacific and also Antarctic soils data. Uh, to help you find the right tool, uh, we've got a tool finder page that takes you through a series of questions and hopefully guides you to the one that's most useful for you. Next slide, please. Then resources, so the third main topic. Uh, this is where you can actually go straight to soil publications, soil maps and soil data. And for the first time, also here indicated in the, in the red, 
frame, we've implemented so-called entry points for our main user groups. And that's from gland managers to students, but also Martang and Mari. And the main intention here is really to, to provide better user guidance. That's a feature that some users have requested repeatedly. And so we hope that you are able to find the information you are after with less mouse clicks. I mean, we love to have you there on the portal and spend time on it and improve our web statistics, but we also want happy users that find the information quickly. Maybe a note on the title here, our resources. Um, at the moment, we mainly include resources produced by Manaki Fenua and our predecessors of land care research, New Zealand Soil Bureau and the Soil Survey Division. The Ministry of Works is included as well. But rather than a Manaki Fenua source portal, we really want this to be um, understood as a New Zealand soils portal. So we would happily integrate any soils related information and resources that you have. Next slide, please. Um, there is a new feature right on the start page that we hope also contributes to better user guidance, especially for first time visitors. And we've called it a content quiz. It looks like you can see here on the screen. So we have, we start with four questions that hopefully cover what a lot of people would be after. And if you click on one of those, you will get to the next layer of questions. And so consecutively, it takes you through to the more detailed content pages. Next slide, please. So the new content um, since today, it wasn't really a focus during the recent refresh but we've been able to, to add some additional items such as, for example, here on the top left, uh, information on soil functions. So basically the roles that soils play in, for example, land management, water, climate or biodiversity. And we've also added a page on current and upcoming soil surveys in New Zealand. I mean, there's a lot of soil survey work going on currently from Northland to Southland and so this is a page where you can get a good overview of what's currently happening and if the areas you're interested in are included. Um, at the bottom there, you see a screenshot of our news section. That's also something that's new on the portal. We want to make it less static and we hope to feature everything exciting happening in the world of New Zealand soils. Um, again, here, I wanna say, please get involved. If you want us to feature things, that are happening in your world, in your soils world, let us know. And we can look at putting them up here as well. Next slide, please. Um, if you are hot now to get started exploring the soils portal, and I hope you are, uh, there are several ways you can easily navigate the site. So you can either use um, the top navigation, the topics tool resources chooser. A second opportunity would be just to use the Google type search here on the front page. Or the third one would be that you use the content quizzes um, that basically um, yeah, are on the front page. You can also just scroll the entire homepage, which is now quite a long page representing the entire portal, really. Um, we also have page tags. Uh, you can click those, for example, if you want our content tag for, for example, soil carbon. Um, yeah. Next slide, please. One aspect that's really close to my heart, and I know also for Sam and David, and Sam's mentioned it in his introduction, um, is providing access to our soils heritage. And the soils portal is a really important cornerstone in this custodianship work that we do. Uh, it might surprise some of you, but we have celebrated 100 years of soil survey in New Zealand last year, and you know, a lot of good information has been produced at this time. And this slide just shows two examples of um, how we are making this legacy available to you uh, through the soils portal. On the left side, the so-called legacy map viewer. This is basically um, a low barrier tool providing access to currently 275 soil maps generated between 1932 and 1989 by the New Zealand Soil Bureau. And um, on the right side here um, is a screenshot of our digital library. So the Manaki Fenua digital library, which features a lot of great collections. And one of them is the recently added uh, New Zealand soil news archive. 
from the New Zealand Society of Soil Science. So the entire archive from 1953 is now available through our digital library. And uh, we will have a link to this uh, for you on our last slide. Next slide, please. My last one, I've dug out a screenshot for you from the homepage of the first soils portal in 2006. And uh, so we've probably come a long way, um, but one thing hasn't changed and I've marked it up here for you. The soils portal will always be a work in progress it said there, and that's still true today. Um, and honestly, I think it's not the portal, it's not designed as a one-way street. So really we want you to, to get in touch and you know, if you have comments or news or content that you want to share with the wider soils community, just talk to us. Thank you, that's me. Great, thanks, Thomas. Um, so I'll just, I'm gonna give you a quick run through just of some future plans. So what's kind of in the near future that we'll be working on in terms of um, our online soil information. As Thomas mentioned, um, a big part of what we're trying to achieve here is saving our legacy data. And we've got a really exciting project coming up, which we've partnered with the Lottery Heritage and Environment Trust um, around saving our Antarctic uh, soil data, data legacy. So that will be occurring over these next 18 months. You can see on the right hand side in the picture there, uh, we've got quite a lot of extension of SMAP coverage um, in uh, collaboration with MPI and, and regional council. So those areas which are orange or green are, are where we're currently gonna be working. Uh, and then we'll be launching, well, developing and, and, and launching a, a new portal called the Land Resources Portal. So beyond the soils, it's resources on that, about the wider land environment. And a key component of that will be having a, um, a, a lot more availability of documents and information around the land use capability um, classification system. And, and we'll be loading in better information into um, our environment around the, the LUC as well. So hopefully that'll be um, over this next year really available as well. And the National Soil Data Repository, which is our point base where, we've, um, where pits have been dug and we've got analytical data, we'll be working on improving um, access to that, that as well. So yeah, that will be an active and busy year ahead for the team. Uh, next slide, David. And so, yeah, I, I just really would like to thank, um, it's, there's been a big big team of people contribute to this across the informa informatics team, the information system people, and our soil scientists. And you've met two, two of them today, Thomas and David, who have been instrumental in this, but um, it is a, a, a big amount of people that contribute. So I really do appreciate um, what they've done and, and what they're delivering. And it's great to see it uh, all being very extensively used. And, and we'd like to, you know, we really do need to acknowledge it, um, the funding we get through the National Significant Database and Collections Funding from MB that's enabled this and enabling the saving of, of and make, making our data available. And in, in particular for SMAP, uh, the Regional Council's MPI and there is a number of um, uh, industry bodies and, and industry companies that also help um, keep that alive as well and keep that going. So we might just move to the final slide, David, which is the links and these will be sent out at the end. Um, to everybody in, in an email there. So you can see there's a number of different portals. We don't expect you to kind of uh, download them at the moment, but just keep your eye out for an email that'll have those in there and then you're welcome to go and explore. And um, hopefully there's something of use. As Thomas said, it's always open and we're very happy to find for people to say, oh, it could be, there, be this information on the source portal and that, because that helps give us guidance about where we should um, try to make better information available. But that's us, Christine. Thanks guys, um, that's been uh, really enlightening and we've got some questions coming in. So so one of the ones that's fascinated me first, because uh, I often wonder it myself, um, do you think that we can make the soil quality data that we collect and maybe others collect as well, and which is used for the soil quality and land use indicator um, for the our environment reporting? Um, can we make that available through the soils portal? David, this, is that a question for you? Sam? Uh, well, I suppose. Sorry, uh, technically yes, um, but maybe Sam wants to ask about the questions of who saw quality data and the ownership issues. Yeah, that's where I was going to pitch in. Yeah, technically, as David says, it's quite it's achievable and we do have people can uh, put their own soil quality data in and compare it back against the database through a tool called Cindy 
um, which is linked through there. It's, it's a reasonably old tool now, but it makes it available. But yeah, one of the challenges is around um, protecting the privacy of, of individuals and who, have, who allow us to access their land to be able to monitor soil quality um, across the, the nation. And so there is a, quite a few complex layers through there, uh, but it is obviously put together and it's combined in integrated form through uh, things like our environment, national um, environment reporting, and you can access the data through there from the MFE website. Uh, but yes, again, it's the you know, individual locations is, is, is it's a challenge for all environmental data going forward. And it's because it is a collaboration between land landowners and us being able to use it, the data. So yeah, we would just, um, yeah, it's technically it's all feasible, but yeah, it, it makes it, um, yeah, you do need to protect people's privacy and, and on that kind of side of things. So we've, uh, thanks Sam, That's I, I knew that was probably trickier than it sounded. Um, uh, we've got a couple of questions about soil carbon. So I just want to preface those by saying that we will have a webinar on soil carbon work because there's a lot happening in that space at mm -hmm. the moment. But this, this question may be um, something relevant to the, the portal specifically. Do we plan to have an online site where landowners can store their soil carbon information? So addressing some of those same issues that you're talking about, Sam, um, on their property, like they they do with um, forestry carbon data. Do you want me Maybe to? Maybe I can say something <laughs> from the technical side. Yeah, so so we are not planning this for the current soils portal, uh, but of course that's an interesting idea. And we we principally want interactive portals and not just one-way portals. So it just is probably in reality it's quite complex because you'd have to consider all the metadata that come along with these data. So where exactly was the carbon taken, what methods were used to measure it and so on. So probably not a simple feat, um, but it may be something we want to consider um, for the land resources portal. Uh, that's sort of upcoming work for starting from next financial year. It's just my take on it. Thank you, that, that's a good thing for us. It, it is something that we're we're always thinking about how we really share all this rich data that people have. Um, quick question on LUC, maybe uh, Sam can tackle this for us. Is LUC data for the available for the whole of New Zealand or what proportion of New Zealand farmland is LUC mapped? Yeah, so there's, there's two locations you can access uh, the LUC and from, from here one is on the LUC portal if you want to download the geospatial data set. And, and use, and that's the national coverage um, that, that is the one to 50,000 scale. Uh, and then if you wanted to view it and, and explore it and, and find some of the metadata behind that, you go to the Our Environment website, and on there you can turn on the LUC layers and, and you can look at the data then spatially without having to use your own GIS system. Um, and that's where we're wanting to build the land resource portal as the third arm, I guess, in there in which we can store a lot of the, the documents. So the Word documents, the old regional legends, um, be able to provide a bit like a one-stop shop for accessing LUC information and, we, and we're trying to work with the LUC community to make sure we get um, as many resources as we can because at the moment there's no real web presence for LUC but we know it's, it's extensively used and really important so yeah that's something we're actively working on. Great so we're, we're right on time um, I just want to follow up on uh, I think there are a number of questions coming in and, and so on there will be email addresses for Sam, Thomas and David in the follow-up email that comes out from GoToWebinar following um, this presentation. So if you have any questions, suggestions, feedback or thoughts about the Soil Portal or any of these resources, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of those people. Um, they, we really welcome your, your feedback and comments. Um, so I think we need to draw it to a close here and we look forward to hearing more from you all and uh, we will wish you a Merry Christmas and say goodbye. Happy World Soul Day. Yep. <laughs>